use my 15 minutes, um, but I just want to talk about a few a few points and discuss most of the important issues as far as the plaintiffs are concerned during my first part of my uh, closing argument. Um, but one thing we all know, based on the testimony and the law, that it is the owner's responsibility to meet the building code. It is the owner's responsibility, the corporation's responsibility, to make sure that its unit is safe for its tenants. They have an obligation to do it. They make money on it. They can't say, well, I take your money, but I don't have to make sure that the place I'm renting is safe. If the place is unsafe, the obligation is on the owner to figure that out and warn or make it safe. And failing to do it means they're negligent. That's what negligence is. This was an accident when this happened. It's very, very clear. And unfortunately, it happened on Stephen Wolcott. And it was because it was a mess. There's no way that an engineer was involved in this project or a general contractor because nobody would ever do it that way, let alone approve it that way. It's just not going to happen. A couple points I want to uh, bring out. They just showed you some photographs of a nail on the wall. And if you can recall, Mr. Garofalo specifically said that that was the, pit, the point from C2 that had broken off. Um, he just said, well, that proves it was a poster. Yeah, it was. It was this one, C2. That's what it shows. The shadows are clear as to where these posts were. You know that. You've seen that. The markings on the ledger board tell us where the posts were. You've seen that. You know that. The uh, defense attorney, uh, the defendant, is making a big issue about my client's memory problems, cognitive disabilities. Yeah, he has that. He has a hard time remembering trash. Sorry. He has a hard time. He has a hard time remembering his truck. He has a hard time remembering his grandchildren's names. Um, when his son came in the other day, he said hello to him. The next day, he said, "What are you doing here again?" Yeah, that's his reality. Uh, it's real easy to stand up here and pick on the guy that the defendant gives him the brain damage, gives him the memory problems, gives him the cognitive disabilities, and then criticizes him for not getting everything right. Is that fair? I guess that's for you to decide. <coughs> Bottom line is this. Um, they said Harris said a bunch of things. The evidence is clear. Harris did not say it. The testimony of Harris, when we asked him about C2, had you ever seen it? He said, no, I had not seen C2. And I already showed you the clips of the lumber he was talking about, the two-by-fours that were taken out. They were already on the ground because that was Mr. Wolkoff's stuff. And Mr. Coney did not say, um, what Mr. Coney said was that Mr. Wolkoff was removing his stuff. His stuff. And it was his stuff he was doing there. And he was removing the screws. That's what Mr. Cohen saw. And as you can see, the shelving was up. A lot of the parts were up with screws. This has been uh, a very difficult time for them, for the Wilcox. Since 2009 on, their life has been, my words, garbage. Health care, medical care. Doctors, hospitals, bills, problems, more problems, more problems, more problems. And that's going to be their life forever. Forever. That's it. Are you supposed to have a really strong fourth quarter for those of you that follow football? In good shape to take care of themselves? This accident stripped them of it. They instantly brought him to his knees. Catastrophically injured. And instantly took his life partner, his wife, with him. I remember the, there's the Simon and Garfunkel song, uh, which reminds me of Stephen. Um, it's called The Boxer. And the last verse of The Boxer says this. Let's see if I can get it right. In the clearing stands a boxer and a fighter by his trade. And he carries all his memories of every glove that knocked him down or hit him. And in anger and his pain, he screams, I am leaving, I am leaving, but the fighter still remains. When I look at Stephen, that's who he's been all his life. He's, he's the boxer, he's the fighter. 
And he takes his hits, but he goes one more round. Keeps going, one more round. Now, his arms are tired, he's beat up, he goes one more round. The bell rings again, he comes up one more round. Now, finally, this one, the building lands on his head. Crushes him. People say, you're down and out, man, you're dead. You're not going to make it. He goes one more round. Say, so, you're not going to walk again. He goes one more round. And he walks. Yes, with two braces, and yes, with walkers, but he walks. He can't see anymore. Well, yes, I can. He's all wear special glasses, and I'll look down this way, and I, I can see. He's going to go one more round. You're never going to urinate again. Well, I'm going to find some doctor somewhere with the help of my wife that's going to be able to do a surgery that nobody can do. So I'm going to go one more round. And when he was asked in the stand, well, what is it? What is it you would want to do? Well, I don't want to get better. Than that. Oh, let's go one more. So even though he's been pummeled and punished and beaten, he's going to go one more round. So I asked Julie one important question. Uh, well, we're all important, but the last, the last question was that if he had. Your seat in that before the injury. For one day, what would you do? Over her hands? I'd make passion or something. I'd go to the beach. I'd play in the water. I'd walk in the sand. I'd hunt. It's about 24 hours we were out. That uh, song that they were dancing to in the little clip that you said, when you saw it, Kind of funny, but moving around. Let's say the last dance for me. Julie didn't know the last time she ever danced with Stephen. That would be the last dance she ever had with him. She saved the last dance for him. Is she still there? My client's lives have been ruined. Please compensate the trail for what they've done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones.